This is an extract from the Leader podcast by The Evening Standard, hosted by me, David Marsland. To hear the whole thing, search for us on your podcast provider. The next station is Westminster. Here's the movie trailer pitch. London is in peril. It needs you to save it. All you have to do is catch a train. Travelling into the city can feel a bit heroic right now, what with the alleged threat of coronavirus lurking in the carriages ready to mug us. But TfL insists the underground buses and trams are as safe as they can be, and they've got independent testing to back that up. After some nudging from the Evening Standard, we've seen the Mayor Sadiq Khan, Health Secretary Matt Hancock and Chancellor Rishi Sunak among those getting on the tube. But the public still seems nervous could free travel be the push that people need? It's being considered, and our editorial column thinks it'll work. Now is the moment for some innovation. And after Eat Out to Help Out, it's clear people respond to discount offers and a bit of clever marketing. One idea in the pipeline is the first ride free scheme. It would give cut price travel to people who haven't been into central London since spring, creating a chance to get back into the centre of the city, to use shops and visit galleries and museums. Getting people on the tube is vital, and this seems like the way to do it. We hope it goes ahead. A free ride on the tube might not be quite as much fun as a discount lunch, but every bit helps in bringing London back to its best. Well, this story was broken by our political editor, Joe Murphy. He's with me now. Joe, it's provisionally called First Ride Free. How does it work? David, this is something that uh, might just help get London out of the deep economic hole that it has fallen into since the pandemic came. And what's been identified as a real problem is that while people would like, in theory, to go back to work in many cases because they're fed up with, with home, Uh, And while a lot of people would love to go to the museums and galleries, which Oliver Dowden told us last week are are really quiet and nice to go round at the moment, and while people would love to go in the West End, they're actually nervous of the travelling part. And it's this fear of going underground and into confined spaces that is holding a lot of people back, Uh, understandably. The reality is that outside the rush hours, the tubes and the buses are running virtually empty for most of the day. So the plan is get people to come in at least once and they'll probably gain confidence and go back again and again. So the idea is let's give people a free ticket into London and home again. So the people don't have to pay for it, but who will? I can't imagine the government's got much money left after things like Eat Out to Help Out. Well, the government had no money to begin with, but it's been borrowing like crazy to get through this problem. And the question of who pays for this is currently an open question. Now, the new boss of TfL, Andy Byford, is the brains behind this particular scheme. Some other schemes have been called for in various quarters. And he needs government support because TfL's finances, as you know, are on life support. So they're calling the hospital consultant, which is the government, and ultimately the Chancellor, Rishi Sunak, to approve this one. And the government ministers, like the Minister for London, Paul Scully, is is deeply involved in the talks, are saying, well, maybe the private sector could be putting in some money to this because ultimately they'll get the first benefit of it. And I've spoken to some of the great West End business leaders who are in the city who are saying, well, actually, the people who'll benefit ultimately are the Treasury and the Chancellor because if London gets back on its feet, you're going to see tax income flowing again. So at the moment, there's a bit of a pass the parcel with the paycheck to fund this project. But what I can say is that on all sides, there seems to be an enthusiasm for it or for something like it. So this is, I think, destined to go ahead. And we do know, of course, that London's economy is genuinely in peril, don't we, Joe? There have been lots of businesses talking about this, big fears about coming up to Christmas. This is the kind of initiative that could, could help the city out. The great problem for London businesses is they pay extraordinarily high rents 
for their properties, the highest in the world, I think, for a lot of central London. And that fixed cost doesn't go away. You can furlough staff, you can mothball bars and restaurants and galleries and theatres, but you can't stop paying the bills without going out of business. And to pay the bills, you need punters. I was in the West End just two nights ago, actually. I went out for a really good meal in Piccadilly. I went walking around Soho and Chinatown, Loved it. It was very quiet, though, I have to say. And several premises were really not getting enough visitors in. We need to get that footfall up. Otherwise, things are going to go wrong. And the centre of London is so important for the identity of the city. And that's what draws in people from around the world to work here, pay taxes here, and ultimately give us a prosperity that we all enjoy. Now, Joe, we're going to speak shortly to the travel journalist Simon Calder about the problems with the government's airline quarantines, this issue of uh, Portugal and parts of Greece where different parts of the UK now have different rules. Has anything been said at Westminster today about what's going on? Well, interestingly, we've just been grilling um, the Prime Minister's official spokesman about what went on behind the decision that was announced late yesterday on Portugal and the Greek islands. Welsh Health Minister Vaughan Gethin has said publicly that the Joint Biosecurity Centre, which is the main scientific advisor to the government on this issue, advised that there was a health risk due to travelling from those places and that quarantine was appropriate. So we put this to number 10, and the answer we get is not really an answer at all. The answer is, well, the process is that we take advice from the Joint Biosecurity Centre, and then ministers assess that and make a decision. Well, we know ministers make a decision. The question is whether that decision was in line with what was advised by the JBC. And multiple times we asked the question, and multiple times we got obfuscation and non-answers in response. You can draw your own conclusions for what it's worth. My conclusion is the JVC said, red list them, and ministers said, not yet.